This recording is going to show you how to how you might do your uh, assignment to analyze a beam in small and large deflection conditions with uh, both beam and uh, solid elements. So uh, what I would do, since we need two different kinds of geometry, and it's nice to keep the data together in one case, is I'd create one standalone uh, static structural system and then create a second standalone static structure system. And we can come in here and create the engineering data that we need. We'll create a new one. I want to drag down and create isotropic elasticity. Um, will be the main thing that we need uh, in this case. Now properties for PLA can vary widely depending on additives in general for polymers. Um, but we'll go ahead and just use um, 3.5 GPA and Poisson's ratio of 0.37. Um, these results can be amended based on, and I'd suggest that we use some results that are measured uh, for the final properties um, from, the, from the experimental groups that are working on this analysis. Now, with that, now we can go proceed to make. Now, to avoid having to input that in twice, I could connect their engineering data. So that that will at least be the same uh, between the two models. And now, in order to keep track of what these differences are, I can double click down here and I'll saw this one B model. And I can put this one in this 3D model. Okay. And I can create, you can create your geometry in where you want, but particularly for the B model, um, I would strongly suggest using space claim as it is very effective in this to be able to create the cross-section efficiently. And I haven't personally looked into how to import a um, B model through a CAD program. Okay, so here we are with the space claim open. Um, we can select the plane. Uh, I'd like to use the XY plane. Uh, now we can create a, uh, it's also helpful to uh, make sure our units are set up appropriately. So we can come up under options, units, and since we we'll go ahead and switch this to imperial and inches, and I'm going to set my grid spacing by 0.5 inches. So to create a B model, I'm going to drag a line over here and I'll hit space so I can now type and I'll hit 24. That's the length of my beam. Now uh, I want to be able to create, to create that beam I need to select a profile. So we want a rectangular profile here. All right, so now I have this beam profiles and I can click here and edit beam profile. So you notice that that's opened another tab down here at the bottom. So I have the rectangle and the, des the design. And so I can come in here and select these parameters. And this is 1.25. And this is 0.03125, 1 32nd of an inch. And now I can come back to the design tab, click here at the bottom, and you say, I see my line. And I can also click, you see there's a series of tabs over here under groups. I'll come back to structure. So I have a beam profile and I have a curve. So now I want to create, I can select my line. I can either click on it or select it up here in the design tree. And I can hit create. It's going to create a beam. So now instead of a curve, that is a beam it has a defined shape of a rectangle. So my geometry is created. So I can close this. And now uh, I can come through here and open ANSYS Mechanical in order to uh, set up my model 
uh, for a solution. Okay, so here I am. I have my beam model, and we have so I want to go work my way down here and assign all the parts. So you see I have my beam rectangle. Uh, the cross section is brought in as its own shape, and I have uh, my mesh. So I can put in a method, I'll go ahead and put in a method here for sizing. And we'll select the line, apply, and put in a size of one inch uh, for starters. Um, all right, static structure, I need to put in my loads and support. So this is a cantilever beam. So I can put a fixed support, select the edge, fix support on one side. Now, your geometry, you're applying a force, but for this demonstration, let's apply a moment. So we select, select a moment, apply it to the opposite end, and we'll put 10 cans. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and select those components, and I want that to be a moment about the y-axis. So we'll put 10 in there. Okay. Now, uh, to study what's going to happen as a... Actually, so I've got my moment. Oh, I didn't hit apply. You notice there's a question mark here. And I never hit apply um, to my geometry selection. So let me hit apply, and that changed to a check. So now my moment load is the correct to apply to edge. Um, analysis settings, we have large deflection off. Uh, we'll leave that as is for a moment. Now I need to get my outputs. And so let's, let's just go ahead and find Go ahead and put that as a parameter. Um, for outputs, I'm primary interested in deformation. I'm going to choose directional. So now it defaults to orientation to x axis. So I can I will also add one that will show me the deformation in the z axis. So let's do z axis. And let me just Rename that so Z deformation. Just because it's interesting. Now I can also, if I'm with a beam model, if I want to see more detail about that, I can use a beam tool. Um, and that's putting some stresses. There's also some sub-elements of the tool that I can get um, or different kinds of stresses that it will calculate as well as, uh, as deformations through the tool. And it does that because those stresses have to be interpreted in context of a beam. Okay. Now I can hit solve. Now, you notice that it came up with a warning here that the deformation is large compared to the model bounding box. Um, that is indicative of the fact that this is a large deflection problem. Um, and it, it would be a warning generally that maybe you have some bad boundary conditions or need to turn on large def de uh, deflections or nonlinear def deflections. Um, Let's see. Now, one of the things I may want to do is look at how this varies with um, load. And so I could define multiple load steps in here. And now when I come to my moment, I have an array. And so I could start this out. And I like to, if I was going to explore this, I might want to start out with some high, a lot of variation. So you notice it's kind of trying to update this. 
um, it's probably plenty in there. So I only really need those first eight, um, first seven load steps. Let me come back and I'll change this to seven. And we'll see that that um, sort of appended, um, cut this short. And you notice I'm varying this because I'm exploring a wide range here. I'm varying it roughly factors of two uh, between each level of uh, each setting. Um, so I could get those values. Now let's go ahead and solve this again. Right. Solves very quickly because it's a linear analysis, 24 elements since this is a beam. Uh, notice the x deformation is zero. Uh, that comes from the small angle deflection assumption. And it says at the maximum it's doing minus 31 inches. Okay. I can select this graph tab down here and it's graphing the deformation versus load step. And I can also see that it's plotting it um, in. Uh, my minimum maximum value versus load steps. And I can I can animate this uh, to kind of have it move through that deformation. Now the key to this is to come through and I also want to compare to what happens if I turn this large deflection to on. So let's just resolve that and see um, compare the deformations. Now I'm going to pause this because this takes a little bit longer to solve. Okay, so we solved. This only took a few seconds. Um, now we look and we see that the X deformation is quite significant. Um, and indeed, if we, if we animate this, we can see it peaks at a minus 19 inches. We can switch to the Z. Of course, the shape is the same, um, but it, uh, it, the amplitude has, uh, and shape of the beam has changed quite a bit. The, you can also notice true scale. Sometimes the scale setup there can throw you off. This is automatically selected true scale. Um, you know, if we were to select auto scale, all of a sudden it doesn't look like a very large deflection. It actually could be very misleading. And so uh, you need to pay attention to what that is. And sometimes it's good to just go up and look at it with true scale selected. Um, so let me get out a couple of, uh, oh, let's see, we actually want to look at deformation. So let's get out our uh, um, maximum Uh, our peak values out of this. So that would be the minimum, um, and this is actually negative on both sides, so I could just not worry about the maximum on this. Um, so we can extract that value. No, it's going to get the value over time. So this is a maximum load uh, that it's going to, going to give that to me. Um, so that'll turn into a parameter that I can look at. Uh, and let's and so again, that was a large deflection. Uh, so we're going to close this out. And now let's go back and see what happens if oh, I did not set an input parameter. So let's pause that for a moment. Come back over here to our project. I need to reopen ANSYS Mechanical so that we can set the, uh, the mesh size as a parameter. So again, I'm in here, and if I want to explore my convergence, I can put a parameter for my mesh size, element size, um, and then come back. Now I can come into my parameter set. So my edge sizing, and I can run that with, uh, say, Look at it with 24, 12, 6, 2, 1, and 0.5. Um, 
in terms of the mesh size. The okay, and we can see how that affects the deformation. So we'll go ahead and update design points. Again, this is set on nonlinear because that's the way I left it last time. And we'll pause one. Okay, so here we have the solutions to those data cases. You can see uh, the number of nodes uh, from 3 up to 97. Um, and you see there that the, that the value of the answer um, did not change um, significantly across that. It really doesn't take many nodes, more than one element really, to get pretty close. And by the time we had, uh, um, so these were six inch elements, so four elements along the length, um, we didn't see any change out to uh, uh, past, past three significant figures. Okay, so that's one of the reasons we like beam elements is they're very efficient even in large deflections. Okay, so now we could come back and, and you would want for your case study perhaps to rerun that with a linear setup and see how that varies. Now this was all done with the moment loading you will find that with a force loading assigned in your homework, some things will be a little bit different. So you need to repeat this analysis, and you may see slightly different conclusions in some aspects, both in linear and nonlinear analysis as you go through that. So don't be surprised, but the same process should follow uh, as you go through that, though convergence may be, um, and the analysis may take just a little bit longer.